hell o. Um, this is my Hellraiser ranking. I know that was a terrible pun. Um, I'm a little buzzed. Been drinking a forty. Um, not a sponsor. Yeah, Hellraiser. I watched. I was gonna watch them all in one sitting, but I only own one through Revelations on DVD. So I ended up watching one through four, sleeping, then watching five through Revelations. And then I went a few days, finally got internet again. Um, and then I watched Judgment and the new one um, on my phone. And let me just say, watching all of the Hellraisers is... <sighs> A true waste of good suffering. Um, there are very, very few Hellraiser movies that are actually good. So, without further ado, um, number 11, Hellseeker. Um, the, like, the main character of the first two movies is the best character in the franchise that's not a villain like obviously Kirsty cotton is great i love her so to have a movie where the whole movie all you're doing is following this dipshit piece of shit that is a cheating on her with like seven women and b is plotting her fucking murder why they thought making him uh, the main character will never make sense to me. And then you lessen Kirsty Cotton as a character by having her, in the end, be the antagonist. Like, yes, dipshit has it coming. But we are presented through the story with him as the protagonist. And at the end, our main character of the first two movies is presented as the antagonist against a piece of shit that we didn't even like fucking following in the first place. God, not to mention how ridiculous it is. And it falls in line with a bunch of issues I have with most of the sequels in this franchise where like, like I listened to the audiobook a few years ago and I came to the conclusion that the place the Cenobites come from is not biblical hell. It is an alternate dimension in which all of our sensations are so heightened that the BDSM that they go through on purpose, like in order to translate their universe to ours, the closest thing they can come up with as a sentence to make it make sense to us is it's like hell. To me, in the first two, it never represented biblical hell. But from five onward, it's all about God and the devil and shit. And that's just asinine to me. It's reductive. I mean, the whole point of the franchise to me was like that it was an alternate reality or like it was a parallel dimension or something that you could go to where like every nerve is always work. like, you know how like when you have tooth pain, so you punch yourself really fucking hard. So, because your brain can only process the highest amount of pain at once. To me, the alternate dimension was just somewhere where every nerve worked completely at all times, despite what another nerve was feeling. Like, it was where all feeling was heightened i can't really explain it better than that but like the idea that it became hell literally like in the biblical sense is really reductive to the impact of the story to me so i don't like that either and that's a really roundabout way to go about saying what's wrong with this movie when that's really what's wrong with like all of them from five onward but yeah hellseeker bottom of the barrel you follow a piece of shit that you hate the whole time and our main character is a cameo at the beginning we're led to believe she's dead for a long time if you have half a brain you can understand what really happened from the beginning 
and the ending is just so fucking it, it's ridiculous the main character of the first few movies dies and then trades four or five souls i don't remember the number doesn't matter for her life like what at least the cenobites had a reason to want to trade frank for her i don't know hey frank for her almost sounds like frankfurter i'd rather watch that than most of these movies number 10 is hellraiser debtor now this movie is objectively worse than the last movie i just like it more because how much i love kirsty cotton and how much I feel the one below this one fucking ruins a lot. Even if it, even if you're fine with her selling the souls of these pieces of shit, it follows a main character that is directly like the main enemy of her as the main character. So if you in any way like Kirsty Cotton, you're going to be pissed off for the whole movie. I'm still bitching about that movie. Jesus. Okay, moving on. Deader. Deader is fucking awful, man. Like it's a it's some reporter going into like like I don't I uh, to, the, to to this day. I rewatched it earlier this month and I don't fucking get how this is a Hellraiser movie. This is clearly one of the many movies that they just pulled off the shelf and they're like well, if you add Cenobites here, here, and here, and again, it goes into the whole religious thing of, like, it does not make sense with the logic and lore established in the book in the first two movies to the point where I don't understand why anyone would consider this a Hellraiser movie. They literally just, like, oh, shit, we're, we're, oh, we're so close to losing the rights. We need a fucking movie now. Um... This script, yeah, okay, put Hell, put Pinhead in this script, and if that doesn't work, put Pinhead in this script, we'll make them both in the same year, because it, it was made the same year as another one, um, yeah, no, it's fucking bad, like, Deader is objectively worse than the movie I have below it, but the movie I have below it insults me as a fan more, and these two movies are some of my most hated movies, <sighs> I fucking hate a lot of Hellraiser movies. Well, two is not a lot. I don't like any of the movies after. Like I like I like my. Yeah. Okay. I'm a little buzzed, but what I'm trying to say is, I hate these two movies, Deader and Hellseeker. And when you're marathoning them, they're back to back. It's fucking painful. Trust me. And then there's still, like, five other movies I don't really like in this franchise other than that. So, it's, it's painful to get through. Anyway, one last thing about Hellraiser Debtor. Every character is so fucking forgettable, besides the cult. Well, no, the cult's forgettable, too. I just hate them. But I have no opinion on the main character of this movie. I have no opinion on any of the side characters of this movie. I have no opinion on the main bad guys besides, wow, they're douchey. <laughs> so there's like there's nothing in this movie that sticks with you besides the idea of the videotape and bringing someone back to life, which is like so bare minimum. Like it means nothing. The movie is fucking bullshit. Up next is the new Hellraiser, and I know what you're thinking. Everyone says it's the best since the original. What are you saying? And I fucking hate all of the characters except maybe, like, one dude. And that's the boyfriend of the main chick's brother. He was fine. I don't like the characters. I thought the whole storyline was ridiculous and predictable. I hate when a movie this far into a franchise adds new mythology. Now, I will say I'll give it a pass with the new mythology just because it's supposed to be a reboot, but it in no way has any remnants of the story of the first two movies 
or the book to justify calling it a reboot. I don't know. I like the idea of the new Pinhead because in the book, Pinhead was like a they, them and had a more feminine body. So casting and like the performance and shit, it felt reminiscent of like the audiobook, which I don't, I didn't read it. I listened to the audiobook, but apart from that, like, uh, I didn't care. <laughs> like, I, it, the movie is too fucking long. It was two hours long. And I remember when I started the movie, I had just got done watching Hellraiser Judgment, and I almost threw up. And I get to this movie, and I'm like, all right, here's the new one. And I see the time code. I'm like, two hours. I'm like, oh, fuck. And literally, an hour and a half in, I'm like, it's still going. Like, I don't know. I ha The characters are kind of insufferable. There's literally one point where the guys, like, the main chick, I don't know their names. I will in a year but right now i don't know but the main chick is like finds out a her brother's gone b everyone who's touched this box has gone missing her shitty boyfriend trevor is going to, and i only remember his name because it was the same as the guy in hellseeker he's he's like all right i'm gonna throw the box away so that we don't go missing and her dumbass does not let him do it. Like, what? I can kind of relate to and feel sympathy for the main girl in the beginning, but the more the movie goes on, the more she just gets annoying. Every character is kind of annoying, except for the guy I said wasn't annoying, the boyfriend of uh, the brother. The whole... Oh, one thing that really pissed me off was... Uh, the... Like... And I have to explain one thing before I get to what pissed me off. But, like, the, the whole storyline of, like, uh, stab someone with the box and then they get taken instead of you. I like That's fine. But, like, the fact that it works on a Cenobite who is supposed to already be from that fucking place. That's like pulling a skeleton out of a volcano and then throwing it back in as a sacrifice to the gods. It wouldn't fucking work. It's stupid. It pisses me the fuck off. I hate that. Like, I think... Like, after a certain point in the Hellraiser franchise, everyone's like, wow, most of these are shitty. And then this one's just mediocre, and so they give it praise because there's more flaws in the other movies, even though this movie is not good. And... There should be a whole new fucking phrase for that. I thought of the phrase. I'm a little buzzed, so I don't remember, and I'm not going to stop the recording to go find the comment where I mentioned it before, but... It's... Oh, Hellraiser Fatigue. It's when you reach the new movie in your marathon, and you think it's good because of how shitty the last ones were, even though this one's mediocre. Up next is Hellraiser Revelations. Now, most people would put it at the bottom, and I completely understand that. That's justified. Objectively, it's probably the worst made, worst acted. But it's the first movie since the fourth movie that felt like a Hellraiser movie. You know what I mean? Like, it has same story beats and the same mythology of the first two movies. Whereas most of the sequels, like I said, they make it religious when it wasn't religious. I already explained that. Um, or they focus too much on this is your own personal hell, which is an interesting concept. But again, I think it goes against what Hellraiser was in the beginning. Hell Hellraiser Revelations at least feels like an actual spiritual sequel or ripoff, if you will, to the first two movies. Now, the acting is hilariously horrendous. Um, the production value is questionable, and that's being polite. Um, the storyline is okay. 
like like I said, when I first watched this movie, I was like, oh, finally, a movie that's actually a fucking Hellraiser sequel. But it's really fucking poorly made. And it's not even film length. It's an hour and 17 minutes, which honestly, when you're marathoning the movies and you get to the 30 minute mark of this movie, if you don't know how long it is, when it ends, you're like, oh, thank God, this one was the shortest. But that's not a that's not a great thing. Um, when one of the positives of your movie is that, thank God, it's, it's shorter than a normal movie is, that's that's not a good thing. Moving right along, number seven, and I'm going to get shit for this probably, but it's Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth. Okay, you're done. I, I'm d being pissed. Um, yeah, Hellraiser 3 is a cheesy, shitty 90s slasher sequel. Which is fine if the franchise was really a slasher to begin with. I mean, I guess... Uh, I guess multiple people get murdered in the first movie uh, to bring Frank back. But the first Hellraiser and the second Hellraiser, they're not slashers and i understand that three doesn't really follow the typical slasher formula either but it feels like a slasher sequel you know and it has this really dumb vibe it completely gets rid of Chris kirsty cotton and uh gives you this new main character that's not really as likable the chick that lives with her like i feel like she's traumatized and I liken that to, like, just, like, the actress herself feels like she is just in a very dark place. And it, I can't help but think that's probably because of Harvey Weinstein. And that honestly does lessen the movie for me because it bums me out to watch it. Add to that the, like, clear downgrade in budget... And just the dumbness of the movie overall. I know Hellraiser 3 has its fans. And honestly, from here on, I could throw one of these on and have a little bit of fun. But I get bummed out watching this. Like, And honestly, it wasn't until this most recent rewatch, because I don't watch these movies a lot, except for the first two. So, I guess spoilers for the ranking, but everyone knew they were going to be the top two. Um, yeah, Hellraiser 3 bums me out. Fun story. Um, not really fun, but, uh, I, I think Hellraiser 3 was one of the first ones that I actually owned on DVD. And then eventually I got a pack that was a two pack of the first two. And then I got a pack that was literally three through, uh, nine, I think, or no, three through eight. I had a DVD set that's three through eight of Hellraiser. And when I got that, I gave my copy of Hellraiser three to my little cousin. That's neither here nor there, but that's just something that happened. So Hellraiser three was one of the first ones I owned on DVD. And I will say as a final concluding thought on Hellraiser three, I love the song at the ending, the end credits song. Great. Oh, and uh, the, the CD and the camera guy Cinebites are pretty fun. Number six, <laughs> Hellraiser Judgment. Now, Hellraiser Judgment, when I first watched it, I hated it. It was my least favorite. And I had seen all the ones up to that point before I watched it. And again, it goes back to that whole fucking thing where... The, like, to me, the book and the first two movies, the place the Cenobites come from is not literal biblical hell. Hell is the closest thing we have to describe what their world is like, and that's why we call it Hellraiser. So, to fucking go so far as to literally have angels and God in the fucking movie pisses me the fuck off but this movie the 
feels like it was written as a Hellraiser movie to uh, be a love note to the franchise, even though the franchise is pretty shit, let's all be honest here. But, like, it has that cop procedural shit to it, but it also has the fucking, like, that fucked up hellish shit to it. Like, it starts off so gross and grimy with that fucking fuck, and getting, like, tested or whatever the fuck you call it, and then the cleansing, it's just, it's such a gross fucking movie. Like, it literally fucking, like, I was, like, gagging. And it might have been because I was drinking, but, because of course I was when I watched this movie, after I watched nine of these fucking things, and I expected to hate this one going into it, which might be why I liked it more this time. But I actually kind of like the detective angle on this one more than on other ones, even though it's very fucking predictable how it's going to go. Like, obviously, he's the fucking killer. But, you know, whatever. I mean, honestly, saying this movie ranks higher than the ones below it isn't saying much, to be fair. Like, yes, I hate the ending so fucking much. I hated it more when I first saw it than I do now. Because, to me, being exiled to be a fucking normal human is the most ridiculous punishment I've ever fucking heard of. But, in hindsight, I hate being a human. I hate living on this planet. And, you know, that's a pretty dark fucking moment to get an insight into my life. I don't want to fucking be on this planet. But, I also understand, <laughs> from a perspective of Pinhead... That if you come from a place where all of your nerves work 100% of the time, as opposed to, like like I said, where your brain can't function if it feels all pain at all times, so it only processes the most amount of pain in one place as it can, which is why if you're fucking, you got ulcers and you're in deep pain from that, and someone punches you in the arm, that's helping you out because you feel the arm pain as opposed to the stomach pain. To me... In Cenobite world, you feel all of it at once. It is everything to an extreme. So to put Pinhead in a human existence will numb and nullify him to such an extent that it actually makes sense now in hindsight as a punishment for Pinhead. I didn't get it back then when it came out, but I get that now. I still fundamentally hate the idea of Hellraiser being literally religious and literally hell but if you're gonna do that at least this movie was entertaining like it was it made me want to throw up a few times um heather langenkamp being in the movie gets it a million points because a nightmare on elm street's probably my favorite horror franchise and really that's like the last movie that I absolutely don't like. Like, I still don't like Judgment. And the fact that I don't like this many of the movies is a testament to how bad this franchise is. I will admit, Hell on Earth, if it didn't bum me out emotionally <laughs> watching it, because I can read the trauma through the screen, it would. these two would shift... But, as is, this is my ranking. And then you come to number five. My number five is Hellraiser Hell World. Now, I was nine or ten, and I got this one from Video and More. I don't know why I got this one and other other ones. Don't fucking ask me that. It was probably the cover. Um, this was... 2010 or 20 or 2009 or 2010 and i got hellraiser hell world it was the same year that it was 2010 because nightmare on elm street remake trailer popped up so i rented uh the dream warriors and the dream child and a few other movies uh stan helsing and i rented a bunch of movies oh the crazies 
uh, not not the original. All the movies on video more I rented that year. This was one of them. And nostalgia plays a bit of a part in it. Now, this most recent rewatch, I was like, wow, this movie is bad. But up until that point, you know, I have fun with this movie. <laughs> it's a dumb, fun, emphasis on dumb, slasher movie. Now, the part that really fucking ruins the movie is the whole twist where they're all buried under the, the fucking in coffins and literally every interesting part of the movie was a hallucination that pissed me off a lot this most recent rewatch maybe it was because i it was the eighth one of these fucking movies i watched in two days but that fucking sucks because literally it means that it is a non sequitur it has nothing to do with anything pinhead's not in it until the end of the movie and i think that's literally just so they could say pinhead's actually in it Ugh. I don't know. I like Lance Hendrickson, of course. I love Lance Hendrickson. It's entertaining, but the whole, if you're thinking about the reality of the situation, that it's all hallucination the whole time you're watching it, it ruins the movie. It, you can't have that much fun watching it if the whole time you're aware nothing you're seeing is actually happening. It's all a fever dream. And when you think about the way they die, it increases the dumbness of the movie exponentially. First of all, that when they die is also happens to be when they hallucinate their fake death. The odds of that are pretty fucking slim. But she rips her fucking throat out trying to get the thing off of her. Okay, sure. Dude dies of asthma, whatever. And then the other guy, oh, he died of a heart attack. This 20-year-old dude that played Superman died of a heart attack. Okay. I don't know. It It's really dumb, but I have more fun with it than I have with the movies below it. And now we hit the four movies that I actually like. And out of 11 movies, there's four that I actually like. Hellraiser Marathon is an experiment in pain. And honestly, I kind of love that, but... Uh, uh. Number four is Hellraiser Inferno. This is the first movie where it's very clear they're taking hell and using it literally, and I've already gone into why I don't like that. But, as a standalone detective story about a guy in hell, it's pretty fucking interesting. Uh, yes, the main character is despicable. He's not a likable dude. But it takes a while to, for that to unfold, like the layers of the onion to unfold to where you finally see how bad of a dude he is. And once you see how bad of a dude he is and you know that he's in hell, it just makes it more interesting to me. I don't know. There's something about the way this one is told that makes it more interesting. Like the characters, there's something about it that is intriguing. I don't know. I think it probably was a great script laying on the shelf and they took it and they're like, all right, let's make it a Hellraiser movie. And that kind of made it a little bit worse because of how it ignores the actual mythology of the Hellraiser franchise to support this new script. But that does not negate the fact that this original script was entertaining. It's not worthy of beating my top three but it's loads better than every movie below it i mean fuck if you're marathoning these it's the last movie on the fucking franchise it's actually kind of worth watching and it's right before the two worst movies i don't know i i, I like the movie yes the main character is a complete piece of shit but so much of the like twists and turns are k kind of like 
this is probably not a good thing, but they're forgettable to the point where I'm still surprised a little bit when I watch it again. And maybe that's because I'm not a fan of the sequels past the fourth movie, but <sighs> I'm talking shit on my fourth favorite and the first one that I kind of like besides having some dumb fun enjoyment out of Hellworld. I don't know. Inferno is... Like, if you took the script for Inferno before it was a Hellraiser movie, and, like, if I could read that script, maybe I would feel differently, but, may like, just based on, like, the movie, the finished product of the movie, if it wasn't so not what the Hellraiser mythology is supposed to be, it would be a great movie. The fact that it's so far removed from what Hellraiser is supposed to be and is the first movie to do that, really, it ruins it for me. It's like the first movie where it's like very abundantly shoved in your face that this version of Hell is literal. It is biblical hell. And I don't like that at all, especially after reading the audiobook or listening to the audiobook, whatever. Now, y'all know what's going to hit my third place because I already told you what the top two were. Uh, Hellraiser Bloodline. And when Hellraiser in Space is your third best movie in your franchise, that's a red flag. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know if it was the fact that I wasn't expecting much or what. But I loved Hellraiser 4 when I watched it. Like, the whole history of the Lament configuration, it's really fucking interesting. I love the old-timey part of it. The future part of it is interesting to me because it's the only movie in a franchise that goes to space that takes it seriously and earns taking it seriously, which is fucking crazy. I mean, I can only think of a few others. Like, Jason X is exactly what it sounds like if you were to say, oh, it's Friday the 13th in space. Leprechaun 4, all of the Leprechauns are, like, C movies. And I say that because of my respect for B movies is so high that I have to put Leprechaun on a tier lower, even though I love Leprechaun. I'm not shitting on those movies. I'm just saying, objectively, they're not the best made movies. But Hellraiser 4, for some reason, is great. And I don't get why. But I love it. Like, cause like the whole history of it, like the whole like the the bloodline of it. I love it. It's hard to describe because I'm a little intoxicated and it's been a few weeks since I watched all these movies. But I don't know. I really like this story of like this family that keeps like instinctually going back to the same design and opening a portal to a hellish dimension that like is full of torture and pain and pleasure. And I, it's just, mwah, I love it, but it does not have a spot on the top two. I will say the movie kind of goes like this because of the fucking, the early, the old age part, like the 18, 1700s or whatever the fuck part is probably the most interesting part. And the middle modern 90s part of it is kind of the least interesting part. So it's like, it's a weird thing. And the space part is really not important. It's just the section of the movie where they explain everything. It's not structured the most interestingly. You don't have enough time to really connect to any of the characters because each like character only gets like a third of the movie. But it's still better than every movie below it. It's still better than every movie after the second movie. 
So what can I say? I don't fucking know. But my top two, um, number two, controversial, it's the original. I love this movie. And this is the first time I've said that in this ranking. <laughs> it's great. The whole concept, everything that's been said about the original movie has been said. I can't add more to that conversation. I probably could if I was sober, but I'm honestly, I am pretty far into this 40 and I'm not slowing down on it. So, but yeah, no, Hellraiser 1 is great. The reason it's not my number one is because of how good Hellraiser 2 is. Like, I love Kirsty Cotton. I think Frank is such a fucking creepy villain. I love this movie. I love that Frank wears his brother's skin. It's so fucked up. There's so much fucked up shit in this movie. The whole storyline. Like, just go back and watch it again. And then come back and tell me it's not top two Hellraiser movies. I'll wait. But the reason Hellraiser 2 is my number one is because it further explores and exemplifies the character of Kirsty Cotton as a great heroine. Um... The new girl, I'm, I'm a little intoxicated. I don't remember all the characters' names. Sorry. But the mute girl, she's great. The doctor, I love the, the way the doctor is like... Uh, just th that whole storyline is cool. But really, the thing that makes me like this movie most is when I read the... or listened to the audiobook, there were certain story beats and points that were made that I didn't get from the first movie as an adaptation that were further exemplified and explained better in the second movie. Like the whole other world that the, that the Cenobites came from. Like, I fucking... Un I understood it more after the second movie than I did in the first movie. The second movie is much more grand. It's much more visceral. It's more fucked up. And... It's actually a fucking sequel to the first movie and not some script they found off the fucking side of the street and threw Pinhead in. It, like, the second movie's my favorite. I could probably further go into why, but I don't think I need to, and I'm too drunk to. And I wouldn't say I'm drunk, but I'm not sober. Um, yeah, that's my ranking on Hellraiser. I know a lot of people put the new one higher, but honestly, that's Hellraiser fatigue. Um, let me know what your ranking is. I probably don't care, but I'll read it. <laughs> that's fucked up. Anyway, um, yeah. Catch you later.